Hey everyone, Derpy here, back with another Battle Pirates video. I have another ship build video for you, and this time it's how to build a gatekeeper. I'm going to start off by saying that I'm getting back into PvP, but I'm still not 100% the top-notch best PvP player in the game, so some people are probably running with a slightly better build than this one, and I don't have any access to any of the secret alliance builds that are only kept between that alliance. Anyway, I'm just going to be showing you how to build a gatekeeper, two or three simple designs, and also how to use the gatekeeper and how I've been using it in my base. Here we go. I'm going to start with a fairly simple build, which is a more standard one using the Deadbolt Scatter Gun. The mechanics of the gatekeeper are such that when the gatekeeper is underwater, it heals the four closest buildings that were damaged. And it only heals when it's underwater. If it's underwater, it cannot fire surface weapons. The Deadbolt Scatter Guns are a surface weapon. When the Gatekeeper does surface and it is above water, which it does do unlike the Gluttony or some of the other subs that we've had, when it is above water, it does do a whole bunch of damage and can shoot surface weapons. When it is underwater, it heals. Once above water, it does not heal. That's the basic one-on-one, two-cents video on the Gatekeeper and the mechanics. So, now let's talk about our build with the Deadbolt Scatter Gun. These things deal corrosive damage, so you want to try to maximize your corrosive damage. So I'm going to go in the uh, search bar here in the regular blueprints and type in corrosive and see what pops up. This is how you sort of get a build going. The most biggest corrosive damage thing you can use right here on a PvP Defender Hole is a compressed corrosion canisters too. This adds 68% corrosive damage and some splash and makes your de and decreases spread, which makes your ships focus a little bit more on one spot where the enemy ship is. That's great. So that adds some corrosive damage. The next special I'm going to use adds scatter gun reload and multi shot, both of which benefits it's the corrosion diffusion corrosive diffusion system. Now this benefits the Devil scatter gun because it is a multi shot weapon and is also a scatter gun, so that's great. The next one I'm going to use here, you have a choice. You can either use assault battery MKCOM, which adds 25% corrosive damage. Or you can use the Resonance Capacitator, which adds a 36% all damage, including corrosive damage. The downside about the Resonance Capacitator is that it needs to be triggered by another defender in your fleet, such as the High Guard Warden with a Navigation Array field. So if you want something that works anywhere, use Assault Battery MKCOM. If you want something that works only in a more specific spot, closer to your other defender ships, and has some more strategy, but does a little bit more damage to your Resonance Capacitator. Just so you're not confused, I'm going to use Assault Battery MKCOM, and I'll put that in the hash code that I put down in the description. The last special here, you have a couple choices, and should probably vary ship by ship. What I'm going to use here is, you have two options. Number one, you can go for something that increases your corrosive damage more, such as the Corrosive Force, which had 15% corrosive damage at the cost of a small amount of range, or add Corrosive Upgrade, which is corrosive damage and no other downsides. So that's something you can do. You can buff corrosive damage by just a little bit more. Don't use corrosive scope, you'll subtract corrosive damage. The other option that you have is something else that has to do with cloak time. Because if you're gatekeepers, and you'll see this in a second, when I go over all of my strategy with my gatekeepers and how they're placed in my base, cloak time, you have a couple regular weapons that, a couple regular blueprints that do it. You have Nautilus Battery 3. 2 and 1, which add 18%, 33%, and 49% um, cloak time, as well as the blueprint special of Nautilus Battery 4 at 68%, stealth attack system adds some, as well as concussive damage. You also have subaquatic sub propellant as 20% cloak time, some other things. Basically, what you want to do is you, if you have multiple gatekeepers in your base, they should surface at different times so that your buildings are always being healed and so that an attacker can't just time when your gatekeepers are underwater and rush through there. Because remember, if your gatekeepers have surface weapons such as the Deadbolt Scatter Gun, they don't fire one underwater, and that's how it's supposed to be. It's a strategy game. So what I've done is on one gatekeeper, nothing's my last special slot there is the Corrosive Force, which adds more damage. On another one, I have the Nautilus Battery IV, Nautilus Battery 4, which adds cloak time. Now, you want to make sure your cloak time is different on all your different ships. I probably actually should have used Nautilus Battery 1 on there because it will surface more often, 18.6%, will mean it will be on the surface more often than the Nautilus Battery 4. So that's a basic Deadbolt Scatter Gun build. Just make sure your things surface at different times. 
One other thing you can do with this final special slot here is you can put on some kind of stun resist or evade. I don't think evade will be helpful at all. I'm not going to recommend that as you have minus 50% evade to begin with. So let's look at some stun resist specials you can use. The best one you can use is the ECM dampener, which has a stun resistance. People try to pinch you. Uh, so you can use this. People are pinching your gatekeepers a whole lot, although that hasn't happened to me yet. So there's one option for you, ECM dampener, in case you want to use some kind of stun resist special on your gatekeepers. I have left the armor blank because you notice it already has 36 million armor points. I don't really think it also has it also has a whole bunch of deflection already, which is important for PvP. I don't think that adding a, an armor, um, one of the, if you do add an armor, it should be the plate 8, penetrator plate 8, concussive plate 8, corrosive plate 8, something like that. You, sh you should use whatever the meta is using. So currently with Warhounds, maybe you want to put on a concussive plate. If people use basilisks more, use explosive plate. I'm not going to put any on my ships because it doesn't help that much. And the build time is just way too much in addition to the repair time going up. So I'm leaving it blank on my ships, but you might want to consider putting one on yours if you have extra build time or something like that. So now let's talk about a different type of build, which is a build that fires the entire time. So you can use torpedoes on this one, such as the one that came out with the Lurker, which I actually forget which one that was. I think that was the Abys Abysmal Torpedoes. <laughs> That's funny. Abyssal Torpedoes, however you say those. I don't think the damage on those is really necessarily good enough. I don't think torpedoes are great because you have to place your ship so it, can, it can't be blocked by land. What I'm going to be showing you instead is a Piranha Depth Charge 4. Now the damage on this one is slightly lower, but I'm going to go ahead and it's a depth charge and it is concussive. So what you're going to do is you're going to boot depth charge and concussive damage. What I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to search for concussive damage. I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I am going to use Stealth, Attack, Stealth Attack System 5, which adds some cloak time as well as concussive damage, just to make sure it surfaces at a different time than all your other ships. Now what you'll notice is that right now I can't go ahead and use another cloak time special right here. You can see that Nautilus Battery 3 is blacked out. I can't put another one on there. I can't stack it. But let's go ahead and boost some more depth charge and boost some more concussive damage. You'll notice that many of the newer PvP specials are PvE specials you can't use on there because it's only a generalist or it's only a, a different ship, it's only a skirmish, but I'm instead going to use concussive, or, excuse me, PBX payload. This increase, increases depth charge critical and depth charge critical chance, which is good for breaking deflection on many of these new conquerors and warhounds, etc. So we boost all the concussive damage we ha we can right now. We've, with all the, we've boosted all the depth charge damage. Let's boost some concussive, excuse me. We have boosted all of the depth charge damage we have right now. Let's go ahead and boost some concussive damage. What we have right here is, if I search concussive, we have a couple different options for specials. You can see that there is, um, we have some basic things like concussive force. We also have some more advanced things like CM, CT, CO reloader, which does boost concussive reload a little bit, which could be pretty good. Although I'm not actually seeing the special that I want to zip drive X here is one that you could put on here theoretically because that will boost concussive reload and concussive damage. I think you'd have to take off your stealth attack system for right here. And instead of putting on stealth attack system, you can put on zip drive X, which will go up to plus 90% concussive damage instead of plus 40, 54% concussive damage. So let's go ahead and put on zip drive X on that fleet and then put on Nautilus Battery 4. You don't want to put on your you don't want to put on Nautilus Battery 4 on one ship right here if it has the same service time as another hole in your fleet. So you can kind of see the more advanced uh, build build strategies sort of that I'm using. You have to make sure all your ships are different and have different service times. And then for your last special, let's try and boost some more concussive reload or some scatter gun reload. So you can see right here, you don't have a ton of options. You have more things like Resonance Capacitator again, which will help boost it, as well as maybe Concussive Force or some stuff like that. So I'm actually going to put on the CM, CTCO Reloader, which will boost your Concussive Reload just a little bit. Again, leaving the armors blank on this one as a general Concussive build, just to make sure that um, you're not really going to be targeted that much. You already have so much deflection. You have 100,000 deflection of each, so putting on another 10,000 a def a deflection doesn't really help a lot. But if you are putting an armor here, put on whatever's being used in the current meta in the current game. 
Okay, I've showed you how you can build your gatekeepers. Now let's show you how you can use your gatekeepers. My base here is not fully up to scratch. It is not the best base possible. But what you can see is I have two gatekeepers right here. And what they're doing, they have a heal range of 60. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my patrol range up to about 60 right there on each of them to show you what they're able to heal. So you can see that my gatekeepers are both healing these decimator cannons, which means if an attacking Warhound fleet wants to charge up the channel and stop right about here, they're going to take damage from my, from my, what are these called again? They're going to take damage from my decimator cannons. And instead, they're going to have to charge through to the back of the base, and when they do that, they're going to run into my explosive howler. They're also going to run into my gatekeepers, which will one of which may be serviced at that time, and both of these have deadbolt scattering guns on them, which should deal some pretty massive damage to them when they come close inside the red ring. Meanwhile, again, these are healing the glacial turret, they're healing the decimators around them, they're also healing the gate. It's called the gatekeeper, you want to heal your gates, right? To make sure that players can't just rush through here with a fleet of five warhounds and bolt through the gate. Meanwhile, you should have your whole island shooting different cannons and launchers and radioactive throwers at them and deal with as much damage as to them as possible. But what you want to do generally is stack your gatekeepers together. The duplicate aura cap is, is right now five, but you can only own three gatekeepers. So you can have to, up to three gatekeepers right here all healing this one gate, making it much harder for players to come through and attack. So there we go. That's my short tutorial on how to use gatekeepers. If someone else wants to post uh, different videos showing how to use those, they're more than welcome to go for it. If you were a general PvP player who doesn't like me sharing these things, okay, well, why are you even watching to this point? But I hope that this video was able to help some lower levels, some people who have the gatekeeper got it in pillage and are just now starting to use it. Anyway, I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you disagree with my builds, let me know. You may be right. I may be wrong. We'll see. I have a couple other videos coming out on my channel soon, so if you want to see those, you know how to find those. Anyway, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.